the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola, very warm welcome to the VR show. The show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have the former Indian national team captain Mr. Renidhi Singh. So without wasting much time I would like to first thank Mr. Singh for coming on the show. Thank you so much and welcome to the show. And I would like to begin by asking you how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period? Uh thanks for saying it's uh, it's not a good time for For all the people in the world, uh, same everywhere in the world, the pandemic has uh, stopped us from do what we have been doing. But last first month it was it was difficult, you know. But now we know that this pandemic is not going to go away. It will stay for a long time, so we have to live with it. Now the relaxation there there are many cases, but uh, but they are recovering as well. So first twenty uh, five days to a month, everyone was so scared. Uh, but now uh, things are getting better of course uh, it's it's not going low uh, the cases are there are getting high every single day but uh, we we know that of course we have to uh, follow the guidelines of what uh, what the medical people are giving and and we have to live it we have to go on because this will not go in one month or two months this will be there for a long time so so why don't we live with it and then the, the fear is 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 there but not not as much as what in the first month So today we'll talk about a lighter topic that is football in comparison to what's happening all around the world right now. So we'll talk about your like you know about you and your playing career and your managing career. So starting from Tata Football Academy to captaining India to being the technical director of your academy right now, how has the journey been? You know, uh, we I am from a place called Sekmai which is uh, in uh, in the state of Manipur. uh from the main city from the imphal city it's about 15 to 20 minutes drive yeah and then this is a very small town and as manipur football is number one for for north east also so my father himself uh, he he used he was a footballer and he was a president for the state association and he used to run a small club here where few ex indian players played and as a 7 8 year old i used to follow them on weekends on 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 uh, on a school holiday wherever they play and that's how i got interested in football and uh, but in those days i'm talking about 89 90 when i was what 10 years old 11 years old uh playing football uh, you don't make a good living and every, my father himself yeah of course when i was born things uh, i was lucky you know i didn't have to struggle at all but but he had to struggle i heard you know he didn't have any money even to buy a football boot he used to cycle all the way to imphal to play uh, about 30 40 minutes cycling you know so those were the days for him and then when his son wanted to become a footballer he couldn't take it he said why why football why don't why you want to play football because you're not going to become anything but by playing football and uh, but that, that 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 was it and and but you know as i was in love with football and i told him that if i get a chance to play under 12 tournament uh, If I get a chance to play under the tournament in, uh, in in Manipur and get selected, I'll be getting a chance to play again to participate the state level in All India in in Calcutta. And there, the, I heard that you know through my friends that the selectors from all over the sports authority of India, Tata Football Academy, they will come. And uh, when I told my father, he said, "Okay, sports authority of India." In those days, then uh, it was more of a, uh, uh, academics and more of into a army school type. but tata football academy was the only academy then and i got to know that if you get a chance in tata football academy you travel to europe uh, every year for two two months one and a half and train over there of course you get to study for free as well and like like sports authority but uh, for football tata football academy is way better but my father wanted me to get selected in sports authority so that i can i can concentrate on my studies and become army officer that was his dream but my dream was to play uh, football but somehow he trained me for a month i was what 10 years old so he trained me for a month and a half i think then i got selected i got selected in both in calcutta when i participated in manipur under 12 tournament and but i i chose to join tata football academy and that was my starting 
And in Tata Football Academy, uh, I was there for six and a half years. I was studying in class five uh, so for six and a half. And when I was 17 and a half, I joined Mohan Bagan. And that's when I signed my first professional contract. Yeah. And then I played for Mohan Bagan in East Bengal for 12 years, 12 years for the national team and 19 years uh, long career. And then now I'm, I'm retired. Last five years, I'm doing a football commentary. I was doing it for two years for the Star Sports. Now I, have, I run my own academy. Uh, we have called uh, Classic Football Academy. So, you know, like you just mentioned, you played for Mohan Bagan and East Bengal. Was it easy to play for both of them? Did the fans accept you? Uh, because, of, the, uh, of course, fans will not like it. So, if I, when I was playing Mohan Bagan, they didn't want uh, to see Mohan Bagan play going away to East Bengal or East Bengal uh, fans uh, play going away to Mohan Bagan. You know, they, the, the hatred is so much. Uh, the competition is so much. So, but then as a professional player, uh, as long as you can give 100%, uh, I think we have to be. Of course, I love both of them. That's why I played I play 12 years, 6-6 six, six years. And But uh, but like you said, you know, fans uh, will never be happy to, to exchange the, the, the club, you know. Mm. So, you have played in ISL with Kerala Blasters and also in I-League for a very huge time. So, according to you, you know, which league is better? You know, like for you, which one did you like? Okay, so now uh, the uh, Indian Super League uh, is quite a good league. The standard is high. The the facilities is good. Uh, the the club structure is, is is very very organized. But but we can't we, we shouldn't forget uh, there was no uh, Indian Super League then when we started 1996. There was I League. So so of course yes, uh, it it was it was the best then in, in uh, for us from 96 to. 2013 or 2013, I think that's when ISL started. Before that, it was only I League. So I would say that you know, it was I enjoyed playing I League for so many years. But then uh, it, it's just uh, a good development uh, from the sports association or, or for the sports lover and uh, the I Indian Super League have started, and we can we have seen good coaching, good coaches coming in. We have seen good players coming in. Uh, whatever you used to see them on TV for so many years, you started training day in, day out, week in, week, week out with them. So that, that's what a big change. I League has done good, uh, to, good uh, for football in India, but uh, ISL has helped more. So, so Indian, Super, Indian Super League for the last few years, uh, the, the players have developed a lot. We have seen in, in our days uh, when we were playing for the I League. Uh, the, the facilities was not great. The, the training uh, program, the training program, and the training place, the ground. If you see the ground now, it's all it's, it's a world class, right? In all the teams, the, the training the training pitch and the, the match pitch, uh, it, it's top class. And in our days, it was it was <laughs> difficult. But I'm happy for all the young ones who are getting a chance. To perform, it's just a good platform to to play good football, you know. And you don't have to worry about anything. You you stay in five star for for six months. That's also you don't share a room with anyone. And nowadays, um, everything was on your own. So you know, you also happened to go on a loan to CSK Sofia in Bulgaria from Kerala Blasters. Yeah. Although you yeah. did not play yeah. there, can you yeah. share some uh, maybe insight you know, as to why you did yeah, not play? That, that, yeah, that was, of course, it was my, uh, after that I retired, so uh, I, that was not a right time, but I still want to learn. So, uh, in Indian Super League is only about four, four and a half months, right? Four and a half to five, not even five, yeah. So then, one of my friends, uh, who is an agent uh, called, uh, from from uh, Portugal, uh, called Nuno, uh, he, he uh, texted me one day, you know, why don't you, of course, this is the, ending time you know my retiring time but still if i can you get a chance because uh, i i was i had to go on loan because indian league was only for four and a half months if i can go there train with them uh, if i get a chance okay if I, if I don't get a chance because only three foreigners are allowed right mm. so i'm not a, i'm not a eu uh, if i am eu passport holder then then i don't i don't come in that three foreigner the three foreigners are, are, are Brazilian, African, so it's, it's very difficult to get in that three foreigner, first of all. But those five months was, uh, CSK is one of the best teams in Bulgaria. And in, in, in many years back, they used to play in, in Europa League and all the stuff. 
So five months was uh, thanks to the the agent who used to take Indian team to Barcelona for one and a half month to Lisbon uh, uh, training in uh, two months. So he was the one who had put me in there, and then it was a good experience. Five months, even though it was difficult, that was my when I was already 34, so it was difficult for me. But uh, 35, I retired after coming back. Uh, but it was the best experience because, like you said, you know when you play I League, uh, all due respect to to all the coaches, uh, it, it was not uh, good enough uh, except Bob Houghton, who was with us, uh, who came to India uh, to the. 2006, and he stayed in India till 2011-12. So that six years with him was the only time we could learn how to play football in a right way. Okay. And before that, uh, we have won against UAE, who was a World Cup uh, side. But uh, after Bob Houghton, Bob Houghton have changed. Who was with us for six years? He have changed the Indian football. And and all due respect to other coaches, uh, except Shuki and. And few others. Uh, I think uh, we the training we were getting was not good enough. So I had to travel outside, see how what uh, the European uh, players are, are doing and the European coaches are doing, so that I can learn something, bring back, uh, and then uh, now because as I I have become and good thing about after coming back, I joined. Uh, I I could have played for two more years for sure, but I joined uh, uh, Pune City as an assistant coach. Working under David Platt, that was the best chance because David Platt was in Man City. He was the coach of Nottingham Forest. So when I got a chance to work under as an assistant, uh, that was the best because see, after staying uh, in Tata Football Academy, I straight away went into Mohan Bagan and I played for so many years. At the retiring time, normally for a young coaches to work under a great coach, you don't get that chance. But I was lucky enough to get a chance to work under David Platt, and he helped me a lot. And after that, I worked under Ab- Abbas, who, who is also a good Spanish coach. And then I thought, uh, after playing, playing and coaching is two different things. Uh, of course, good players become good coaches, but it's you're not guaranteed that good players will become. You know, you have to learn a lot. So I realized that early that you know if I can stay under David Platt for one year or two year uh, and and learn a lot, but I don't want to be assistant forever. So so I played for 19 years and and I had my own experience as well and working under them for for two years like a, a coach like David Platt, learn and then I want to start on my own. That's when I I decided to come back and I decided to come back home and start. Oh, for last two years I've been running academy and in between. Uh, I go. Uh, I used to do for two years uh, as a football expert uh, in, in in Star Sports you know, and commentary uh, for the I League, and and that was a good uh, uh, good experience for me working for the for the TV and and and, uh, and and doing my academy. You know where we have 450 kids for classic football academy. So you know, like uh, one of your teammates, a uh, former teammate. Sunil Chhetri, you know, he came out and said that uh, you are one of the best midfielders of the country, and were very underrated. Do you think there was some media bias against you? Ah, uh, I don't think so because there was no. Uh, of course, in Calcutta, hundred and one lakh twenty thousand people watching uh, in the derby, ninety thousand. So media was 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 good, but then the, the social media is such. Now we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Those days. Of Facebook at the uh, 2010, 11, 7, 8, I think, and when we started in 1996, there was no, there was no Instagram, or there was no social media. Even if you score a good goal, the the football match now, each and every match is live on Star Sports. Uh, in in whole year, we used to get uh, two or three matches live. So just imagine how many matches we have played, how many assists we have done, and how many goals we have scored. Uh, that's nowhere to be seen because there was no social media. Now, if you play one good game, uh, overnight you are a star, right? But uh, that's part and parcel. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, but Sunil, uh, he's a young guy. He's like my brother. When I was the captain for Mohan Bagan, he's joined as a. He's five five years younger to me, five to six years, I think. And uh, he came as a, as a young kid uh, when I was uh, when I got back from the national team. I saw him in uh, in Mohan Bagan, and we played together for eight years after that. We were in JCD for three years, Mohan Bagan, and East Bengal for 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 five years, six years, and Indian team for eight years. So me me and him like Bai Chung, like Bijubai, you know, 
uh, we, we, we share a lot of memories, you know, and good memories. Yeah, but Sunil was uh, not this Sunil then, you know, he was, uh, he was not very fit. Of course, his touch was always there. He's always, his touch has been there since he was a young guy, but he was not as, as hard worker as he is right now. He is, he's 35, but he's still really, he's one of the fittest guys in the team right now. So he's one of the player where all the youngsters should, should, should follow. And, and yeah, so playing, so it's nice that Sunil has said that, but it's because maybe we played for eight years together. And, but it's good that Sunil now, you know, he's doing really well. So, you know, this question just popped up into my mind, like you went out to CSK, Bayachung also went out to UK to play, even Sunil went out to play, but none of you all had that success that you had maybe in India. Do you think like the uh, Indian quality is a little bit weak or the, even you can say the Asian quality is a little bit weak when you go to UK or something? What is the difference? Of course, if you, if you, compare, if you compare the best league uh, in Europe and in India, there, there is a big gap. Still, I understand that. But uh, if, if, like I said, if, if I was a European passport holder, if Sunil was a European passport holder, if Baijun was a European passport holder, then you don't have to, to compete with the best of the world. So, like I said, the sport is only three or four max. In Europe, if you want to play, you I will go as a foreigner. So, if any uh, 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 player from Nepal come and play in India, he has to compete, not with us, but he has to compete with the best foreigners, only five sports, right? So, so in a place like Europe, there is only three foreigners allowed. So, you have to compete in that. So, it's not about, uh, the, we are not, uh, competing with the Europeans, but you will we'll be competing with the world best, you know, from from uh, Latin America or from the best of Africa. So it, that's a difficult part. But yes, I, I can understand that, you know, there is a big gap between English Premier League and Indian Super League. But things are getting uh, a, a closer, I would say. So if you see, uh, if India now, if they can play draw against uh, Asian champions Qatar, you see, the, the, the gap is not is not that big. The gap is getting closer. Qatar beat Japan, Qatar beat uh, South Korea. And in South Korea, in, in Qatar, if India can play draw, things are getting better that way. So, but uh, like when we went, it, we were already 34, 35. And I think Europe is the, is, the, is the place where you should be growing at 16 or 17 or 18. And that's the best time to go where you, you will learn. So. I wish we were when we were 16 or 17. If we could have, if we could have gone to Europe and trained for, for one year, two year, that will be a different scenario. So you know, now I'll talk about your one speciality. That is, you are you are known as a dead ball specialist. The goal against yeah. Syria yeah. in the Nehru Cup final 2009 is still, you know, like fans still like it, and I still see it in many groups in Facebook or something. How did yeah. you get so good at it? So now, since since I was, I was, you see, everyone is gifted. You see, if you see Sunil, his finishing is good. If you see Bai Chung uh, in, inside the box, he's so agile. He the back volley or, or the side volley, he's so good. So I've been gifted. I think, of course, I have to train every single day, like 300, 400. That's what I I I, I, I asked my my young players. You know, so if you kick. 300, 400 balls every day, or if you kick 500 balls every day in a month, how many, how much, or if you touch the ball in the training, so in our days, uh, <laughs> I'm mixing it up, in our days, our training was, coach will say, Jao, 40 round bhago, 30 round bhago, 20 round bhago. We didn't get a chance to touch the ball, right? Now, all the coaching is about how, I'm a coach right now, I'm a license holder, but how we can train the boys with the ball, football, it's not athletic as such, right? Of course, we need to run, but we but athletic is straight run. But we need to do everything with the ball. But why don't in our days we, we don't train enough with the ball? We we just run round round. So so it was it, it was uh, it was a difficult thing. But now with football, if like I said, 700 touches a day if you do in one and a half months is 36,000. 30,600 or 36,000 times you are touching. So you're going to way ahead of everyone. Football is about if you can run, everyone can run 12, 13 kilometers. People say that, oh, yeah, he is not big enough, uh, or, or he's very short, uh, or, or they said, oh, India got physique thick, or, or Saudi Asia got physique thick, but it's not about that. It's about that good touch, that quality touch. If you see, if you, if you can't pinpoint pass to anyone, 
you, you cannot play football. You know, you can run all your life, but if you don't have a good touch, that's what is missing in 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 our in this part of the world. The first touch. It's not the physic. I feel you know, it's it's the touch. So th- this is what when I was just watching Bayern Munich and and it's all about the first touch. You know. So uh, but coming back to the the free kick, I think. Uh, for a young, for a young kids who are coming up, who are 13, 14, 15, 16, I think you should keep trying, keep kicking every single day, and then then you develop your own style, you develop your own touch. When you kick 400, 500 every single day, of course, for months and months, you will develop your own style. You don't have to copy anyone, and then you get better. So you know, like you have, as you said, you have been the assistant of Pune City, and you also had a stint at Neroka. Did you always plan to get into management? Uh, honestly, no. Honestly, when I when I started uh, playing for the club, uh, and all I think about was how I can I can play for the Indian team as long as possible. How I can give because football uh, only 11 is allowed to play right in the ground, and we have we are about 27 players. From that 27 players, call, coach will choose 11 players and maybe three substitute. So to be in that, you know, every single day I, I have to fight for my place because India, there are so many players. It's such a big country. So you don't get the chance. You know, once you lose out, you know, you are not going to get back again. So in the club side, in, in Tata Football Academy, Tata Football Academy, everything was for free. My studies, my Europe tour, uh, everything. And on top of that, we used to get stipend. But they will monitor you every two months if I'm improving or not. If I don't improve, they will send back home, right? And then football was the the thing I loved doing, and and I I don't want to go back home. So every day was, every training session was about survival. How I can survive for a long time. How I can be the best. So when 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 I was playing in even the club side for me, I never thought about about coaching anyway, honestly. But uh, later before retiring, one or two years, that's when I start thinking. You know, because uh, you, you cannot play. I I play till 35. You cannot play forever. But the closest to to playing is coaching, <laughs> so so then then I realized uh, I love this game so much that why don't I I start you know with so much with all the experience if I can help the young young kids and if I can of course now my my aim is to, to be to be the most successful coach to be the the to be a very good coach this is what I am but I cannot just dream just to be the best by not doing in the grassroots right so. So now my academy under 18, under 15, and under 13. You know, and like you said, I I signed in Neroka after uh, after being an assistant for two years. Uh, that's because the they were going to play Super Cup, and and the, the earlier coaches they had, so he had he, they they took him out. So then the director of, of Neroka he called me if I if I'm interested. I said of course that's the best platform I will get to to. And before that, before Neroka, I was coaching. Uh, uh, a local club here called Sagolban United, and we beat Neroka uh, in, the, in, the, in the local in the local league also. And even the Trau who is in uh, who is in I League right now, so we beat both the club. So then, then I thought, you know, why it, uh, if I get the chance to coach in Super Cup, it, that will be the big platform. But somehow, because of uh, ISL and I League uh, club problem, it didn't happen. Then uh, even uh, Neroka, uh, the the classic group. Who was the sponsor for Neroka? Who was the owner of Neroka for five years? They also wanted to pull out because I think the scenario was not was not great because they have been spending a lot of money. Players, I think some of the foreigners they were around three lakhs or four lakhs, and they have been spending so much of money. So why not? They said that Randy, let's start a uh, academy together. Director is is like my brother. We are family friend, very close family friend. He said, why don't we start my? It was Randy Football School then. Then Classic said, "No, we all start together, but we'll close it. Call, call, call it Classic Football Academy." Then it's been a year now. Yeah. So our our, our aim is uh, to to be to come back in the I League, uh, and before that we play uh, under 18 tournament uh, uh, here. And but here we have already this under 18 uh, already playing the state level uh, league. Uh, we just uh, got into the second division side. From second division, it will come first division. Then you can think about I League when these guys become great. So, but. Why I started uh, academy is when when we were young, Manipur uh, is not as rich as a bigger cities or, or say Calcutta, Delhi, Mumbai, Kerala, Goa. The resources is less. Uh, it's a small state. 
uh, everyone is, is dreaming of to get a government job. There is no uh, uh, private industries or private company as such. So it's difficult. Uh, and that's why uh, all the footballers, they all try and get into the best academy in, in various academies in India. But then I, re I thought, you know, yeah, Manipur produced most number of players in I-League and ISL. The talent is here. If I start our own academy here, it can be the best. So let's see, the work is on. I can say a lot of things, but if I don't... I hope I, I feel that I, yeah, we, we can do it, but that's how, but there will be there we have to work hard. So you know you have worked as an assistant manager, as a manager and as a technical director as you're doing now. Which job profile do you like the most? Uh, come again, what did you say? Uh, you have worked as an assistant manager, as a manager okay. and as a technical director. Which one do you like working as the most? I uh, see now uh uh, we, we, of course, I, I want to be a coach, right? Right now, technical director, but this is uh, our own academy. As such. I'm not working for, for anyone, but here, all my, uh, all the players who I played with, my, my juniors, we have about 12 coaches, all are young coaches, but the training program, everything is, is, is run by me. So I, I don't just, uh, it's not like a technical director where normally technical director don't do anything. Uh, they just see how, how is it working, right? But for for me here, I I my hands are full. For me here, I I, I get into the, the coaching here every single day. Uh, the training program is all created by me, and then of course we, we have to I have to uh, talk to my uh, the coaches every single day in the evening uh, how the players are developing and such, what kind of training we should do. So the, all the training program is by me, yeah. So it, it's different. Uh, it's just the technical director of the name, but I'm one of the coaches as well. So, you know, like as a coach, what is your footballing philosophy like? Yeah, philosophy can be different. To, to sound nice, I can I can say that, oh, I want to play from the back. I want to play like Barcelona. Uh, I, I want to play like Liverpool. I want to play like Manchester City. But I think I have to see what kind of... Uh, what kind of uh, the players I have right now? Are they ready to play? Uh, play from the back? Uh, 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 are they ready to play uh, all out attack? Are, are they ready to play? Are they ready to press high as enough as, as what all the big teams are doing? So, so yes, uh, what I want to play is it is a it's a game where people love to watch. I just as a as an Indian team player for many many years, uh, we all, any we, whenever we play with any big team, we defend 90 minutes and we go on counter-attack. And, and that's the thing, I, I, I have played for 12 years like that and I don't want to play. I, I don't want to play that way because it's, it's all about defending, defending, defending. But I want my players to press high and enjoy the game. To press high, really high, get the ball and then score there and, and, and move up as one and come back. So, but. But like I said, though, that's why I, I, because if I want to press high, if I want to play from the back, my players has to be very technically very very sound. Otherwise, I, I if I want to play from the back and my players are not good enough, I will concede four or five goals. So, so my, my philosophy it, it can it can vary a lot. But all I want is to play from the back, to play a high pressing game, and but uh, as a coach, I want to show them. What is high pressing game? What is there to play for? What you have to do when you have to play from the back, and when we play mid press, what we have to do when we have to play counter attack. So from a very young age, I want to show them so that they can adapt every style to play. You know, so adaptation is more important. Like I said, everyone wants to play like Barcelona. You know, everyone wants to play, but are we ready to play is the most important thing. But but yes, or, or, or my philosophy will be to adapt according to the situations and to according to the situation you need football brain you you need creative player uh, and and the most important thing is your technique if you don't have that you know I, uh, for coaches so that's why we, we keep working on technique so you know like this will be a hard question for you because you you've had so much success during your career but if you had to choose one moment as your most favorite from your playing career which one would that be yeah, I think uh, 
it, it's a difficult one, you know, but because mm. it, it, there are moments, uh, every stages of life, uh, I would say. So when I get, so as a young kid, was so interested in football, a small town guy, mm. uh, got a chance to play. Uh, when I got selected when I was 11 in Tata Football Academy, that's the most happiest moment of my life. When, when I signed for Mohan Bagan for the first time, and when I uh, when I was 19 year old, when Suki signed, Suki, Suki said, Singh, uh, 1998, when, when he uh, gave me a debut straight away into the first 11 uh, in the Asia Cup qualifying, that was my happiest moment to be there with Biju Bhai, Ancheri, you know, all these big stalwarts then, you know, who helped me a lot. So as a young kid, 19 year old, straight into the first team, you know, how many coaches going to give that, you know? So those, those are my, my best moment, if you see. And, and after that, uh, we, we have played, uh, I played many years. And then uh, when Bob Houghton came in, when uh, I scored against uh, Syria in the Nehru Cup, when we, uh, when I assist and, and score, it went inside the bar, it came out and Sunil had in Asia Cup against Bahrain. So those are my best moments, you know. And, and then every stage is not only one moment, it's difficult, yeah. So on that note, I'll ask you one final question. These are very controversial questions. People say, I do not know. Yeah. Whom do you prefer, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo? Uh, two different individuals. Yeah, of course, I, I, I would say uh, uh, Lionel Messi because he's from different planet. I, uh, he is he's out of this world. But Ronaldo is the best example for all the young players. I don't know how many players can follow Lionel Messi because he is different. He is different from the rest. He's the only one from from other, like I said, from other planets. But Ronaldo, if you hard work, Ronaldo has shown the world that if you work hard, you will get anything you want. And that's Ronaldo for me. The the, the thing because look how professional he is. Thirty five, and like, like we are talking about Sunil, Ronaldo thirty five and he's still top fit. So and, and in this pandemic, everyone thought uh, everyone was staying at home for two and a half months. Everyone, it's a time that you you don't get the fittest. But Ronaldo, I just read yesterday or day before yesterday that he is much more fitter than before the pandemic. So so this is how professional he is, and and this, with all the hard work what Ronaldo has done, and it's a great example for all the young ones to see. So both are great individuals. But uh, but Messi, I feel Messi is we we cannot copy Messi. I'm not I've not seen any single player playing like Messi though. So on that note, Renedi, thank you so much for talking to me, and I wish you all the best for your future management career and also for your academy. And I hope you can produce maybe thousands Messis for India from your academy. Best of luck. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Suvasis. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Thank you.